Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. So today I want to share with you uh, something that the Smoke and Ape and I recently acquired. We got trainers, a CW trainers. And Ape has uh, an MCT73 trainer, which I don't have. I have the Puda Keeg trainer that I mentioned in my last video. And there will be a link to both of those in the description below. But we were both interested in the CW trainer that VE7 LK, or VE6, excuse me, VE6 LK Vince has that him and his business partner sell. So I ordered a couple of these from Vince. And the other day we had Vince on Coffee and Ham Radios on Thursday night, and he had a great presentation and talked a lot about CW. So when we talk about a CW tutor or a CW trainer, and I'll probably use those terms interchangeably, it's going to be an electronic device, and this is a quick picture of, of the uh, Vince model, and we're going to look at it in depth in a second. So what these all do is you can plug your key into it, and then all of them, and there are, are several. There's also a Morserino, uh, which is another common CW tutor, and there's CW Hotline. And all of these will allow you to plug in your CW key, whether it's a single paddle, whether it's double paddles, whether it's a cootie, a bug, whatever, straight key, and you tell it what kind of key you have, and then you can use it to practice CW without having to turn on a radio and actually transmit anything. All of them have various modes of operation where they will let you, uh, it'll play characters. You can have it just do alpha, numeric, punctuation, combinations. A lot of them will do call signs. So there's system-generated call signs. The Vince model here that we're going to look at in a second is really sweet because it has an SD card slot. So you can put a text file of things you want it to transmit on the SD card, and it will use those to, to help you train. So in the two basic modes that these things have, uh, one of them will have, they'll, one mode will be a copy mode where it plays characters and all you're doing is basically trying to write them down. That's all it's doing. And then you can go back and check what's on the screen and verify your hard copy, your written copy, with what the device says that it, that it transmitted. Uh, this one also has a mode called head copy where it just plays characters and it doesn't tell you what they are. So it's a good way to really practice listening and understanding what those characters sound like. I think I mentioned this in my last video one of the big things about Learn and CW that a lot of authoritative sources mention is that you need to learn the sounds of the characters. Don't count dits and dots. Don't go, oh, you know, two dits, that's an I, or, or three dits, that's an, that's an S, or three dots, that's an O. You just need to hear three dits and immediately know it's an I, just, just by the sound of the dits. Did it, it, oh, there's an I. And once you get those, and a good example of that for me personally is, is CQ. So da dit, da dit, da 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 is CQ. And I can pick that out of almost anything because I just know what those sound like off the top of my head. So with the various modes for, for receiving, you can practice that in multiple ways. The other mode that all, all of these things support in one way or another is some sort of practices mode where it sends you something and you have to key it back. And, and we're going to look at those in, in depth. That's mostly one of the, the coolest things about this unit. This unit also, if you have a buddy, a CW buddy, and y'all are in the same room, it will connect to the other device in the room with you over, like, I think about 433 megahertz, some kind of LoRa local... WAN or LAN setup, it does not go over the internet. So you cannot, cannot use it to go over the internet. So anyway, it has a bunch of sweet features to help you on your CW journey or to keep your skills up. In my case, I'm trying to not sound like a complete knucklehead the first time I key up on the air and try and work somebody with it. So in any case, that's kind of what we're going to look at. Let's jump right into it and take a close-up look at the VE6LK CW Tutor. So here is the device, and this is based on the WV8H Morse Tutor. 
and Vince and his partner, and I can't remember uh, his his buddy's name. Dan is his name. I don't remember his call sign. They took this original design and they updated it to work a little differently and updated the processor, I believe, in it. And all this information is on Vince's website, and there will be a link to Vince's website, ve6lk.com, in the description below, and that's where you can actually order this. There are probably some other variations of this uh, because I believe the design is fairly open source. Vince and his partner, Dan, made this. So the basic design here uses what I believe is an ESP32. Yep, ESP W Room 32 on this design. And here's the information on the back. This is based again on the WB8H Morse Tutor and there's his website and there's a whole ton of information and documentation on that website as well. And you can see here on the back, we have connections for our key, for an external speaker. Here is power. That is an on off switch right there. So there's a slot for an SD card, the standard size. And you, you might have to use one of those adapters if all you have is the micro SD cards. But you can load your text files on that and use that to train. And, and we're gonna look at the menus and everything here in a second. So that's the basic design. Of course, there's a USB connection for the ESP32 if you wanted to flash firmware or reprogram this. You can also run this on a battery. Um, I have an old Linksys router power adapter here I'm going to use for this. But as you can see here, this guy will do take 7 to 15 volts DC. And so anything in that range and 500 milliamps. You have on the front, you have, of course, a volume control. And then we have our selector for walking through the menuing system on it. Um, this changes the selection and then pushing it locks it in. So when you plug this guy in, and like I said, this would work on a battery, absolutely, and you have a power switch so it wouldn't be on all the time. We hit the slide switch and turn it on. And I've already been playing with this, obviously. And so it gives us that little startup screen. So take my word for it, that says receive, send, and configuration. So let's take a jump over to the configuration first. I'll press config and then speed. And if we jump in there, we can set our code speed, how fast we're gonna transmit and what it expects. And then we can set our Farnsworth timing. And this is the timing between characters. All these are adjustable. And then any extra delay between words that we wanna, that we wanna deal with. I'm making myself learn at 20 words a minute but you may want to start a little slower. And if you buy this just because you already know CW and want to keep your skills, you may have it set to, you know, ludicrous speed. I don't know. So anyway, we can push that. It beeps at us and we can go back and select config again. Of course, we can set our tone to whatever you'd like. Uh, here is where we tell it what kind of key. And I'm not going to press that yet because I don't have a key plugged in. Call sign, if we go into that menu, you use the key to send your call sign. And that's how you get your call sign put in this thing. Then our screen, we can change our colors. And first of all, we can change what menu we jump into when it starts. And then we can adjust any of those screens for our startup. And then we can set our screen brightness. And then we can set our background text color. Let's try that. and it makes the changes. All right, and then in the receive menu, uh, it will send us any of this for you to practice copying. That's all it's gonna do. Uh, your key is not used in any of this, at least not that I've found. I have, uh, I bought another key. I found a good deal on a Bagali paddle, single paddle. Let me plug our key in. And they're mowing. They always come to mow when I go to record. So excuse the noise. Hopefully it's not too bad. So quick aside, I found this on eBay. I wanted a single paddle as well. I'm still trying to decide what my favorite paddle is right now. I think I don't like a straight key. So I'll probably have a Fibroplex straight key for sale. 
but I'm, I'm liking paddles. And so far, I think the double and the single, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm, I'm kind of between both of them, but I wanted to get uh, a single paddle and I found this on eBay and it was such a great deal. And I mean, holy hell, it's a Begali. So, you know, for less than my kidney. So I grabbed it. But when you go to these modes now, let's scoot the key over there. Um, when you go to these modes, then it's just going to practice sending. And I have to dit. And now it's going to send K's and M's. And as you can see, I'm, let me move my big head out of the way. It's not, it doesn't take my key inputs. This is strictly for me to copy. So this is lesson one of the Coke method anywhere is K's and M's. I think I showed you this last week. And then as you would go through this more, you would add in more letters until you've learned all the letters in the Coke method in their methodology. We can go to strictly letters and it's going to send me blocks of letters. And again, this is for you to copy my key does not do anything. And I hope that you can hear that. Let me put a mic up here. Yeah, now it's showing up. So we'll turn that down. So that is what we get when we go into receive mode. And there are all these variations, a, a fake QSO, it'll send generated call signs. Here's our SD card set up. If I had an SD card with text file, I could make this as complicated as I want. So that covers pretty much everything that happens in the receive button. And then what this is telling us is practice. And I'm going to click practice. And then this is free practice. Of course, I should turn it on. And it sends the characters. So that is free practice. You can just sit there and, and key your key away. And then here in copy one, copy two, copy word, copy call, it's going to send you something and you have to send it back. So we'll do, uh, we'll do copy one. And it tells you what, what it sent and what I sent. And that's actually green, which means good. Also green. Um, and I got it right. So this is counting up how many I got right. J. Oh, boy. I don't know if I remember J yet. Yeah, that would be wrong. There's yellow or red here on this screen. And then H is going to be one more dit. So you get the idea. And as you go through doing this, of course, it's going to count how many I have right. It does not keep telling you you've got 85 wrong and three right. It just tells you either counts it as a, as a plus or it just ignores it and moves on. So I get zero because I didn't get it right. It tells me what I keyed versus what I was supposed to key. And see again my timing. Yep, not good enough. So I got one right now. Ah. Not fast enough. Three, two in a row. Woohoo! Three in a row. Five in a row. I'm on fire. That is the copy modes. And so one, two, three, one or two characters, whole entire words, call signs, flashcards, which is going to be, I believe, the uh, pro signs and stuff like that. 
or it's just going to randomly pop up a character. I have the volume turned down. Ah, this is just for you to copy one at a time. Yeah, because it's not taking my keys. And then we just press config to get back out of this. And then head copy, as I mentioned, it just sends and there's nothing on the screen. I have to try and key and it tells me if I get it right or wrong. Of course, I'm talking and not listening. I hadn't gone that far in head copy. I thought it was just playing and I had to write it down, but that's cool. I have to key back multiple things that it's, uh, that it's playing. And I don't have a visual cue here. And this is the cool part. So I don't have a visual cue to know that I'm supposed to remember a J. I have to know what a J sounds like. It da da da, right? Or, or an M, da da, so on and so forth. So that's, a, I think, a very cool learning aid. And I think it's going to help me a lot. And then um, we, of course, have the two-way function, which I can't demonstrate because I don't have two of these. And, of course, the config. So that about covers it. Now, the other thing with this device is Vince has provided the STL file for a 3D printed case. And I have a sample of that here. Wait for the mower guy to go past. I swear they always just make circles around my window right outside. So the case is plain. Um, I did this in the Bamboo Labs slicer and added my call sign in uh, green characters at the top. But the board fits beautifully inside the case. And this STL is available. I I think it's on Thingiverse. I'll have a link for that, obviously, below. Of course, I got the knobs on now, but over here we have access to the ESP32. And then on the back here, we have the, the giant SD card, card slot I couldn't find, our key, our headphones, our power, and then on-off switch right there. So that is the case. And uh, the case is, let me go ahead and pull these knobs off. The case is toolless. There's nothing you have to uh, buy hardware-wise. It just basically snaps in. So guys, that is all I'm going to have for this video. There are links to all of the stuff I talked about here in the description below. And if you would, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you're not, it will bring you happiness. And ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Thanks a lot, y'all. 73.